Life and the world does not stop because you having a bad day, honey. Your, it's your favorite strength and coach, Coach Leona. So today we are doing a little bit different. Um, it's actually my six week appointment. My six week appointment. So we're going to see the doctor. Um, I believe everything is okay. Last time I saw him, it was, I saw him uh, the day after and then a week after. The week after he said that I was, and I verbatim, perfect patient. I've been doing really good. Everything that he told me to do, I was doing. He said I was perfect, okay? So the last six weeks have been, I would say, challenging per se. Absolutely. Um, my recovery process, like first off, I just want to say like my surgeon, phenomenal. I love him. Um, Dr. Moritis over in Palm Harbor in Tampa. So over in Tampa, um, Dr. Moritis, absolutely love him. Would definitely recommend. My surgery itself, the whole process was super easy. He's super, super nice. Bedside manner is phenomenal. He explained every single little thing to me. I didn't feel like I was a bother. I didn't feel like um, I was unknowledgeable or he ever made me feel uncomfortable at all. And this is of course like with my chest and everything. Super, super sweet. Like post recovery, they gave me his personal number and then also the, I guess like the office manager, the head nurse or something. I don't know her name, I'm so sorry. Um, they gave me her personal number too in case there was ever any problems and it's not during office hours that I have an immediate way to contact and feel like reassured with that. So it was really great. Um, right after my surgery too, like he called me that night to be like, hey, how are you feeling? All that stuff. So super, super nice. Like and also my, the actual job that he did, I have no complaints. I have no complaints. I think they look phenomenal and Mind you, it's only been six weeks, so typically like with breast implants, they do take a while to actually settle and look more accurately how they're supposed to look. Because it just takes time, like you have a foreign object in your body, they need to settle down and you know, have with gravity naturally also because your skin has to expand for that. So it's a process. Typically it does take a bit. You're usually able to see what your actual breast augmentation is going to look like permanently around a year. So it does take a while, but I am already so happy. I got so happy. I would say the first three weeks, I was like, oh my gosh, wow. And people commenting all the time, like, wow, they look so good, they look so good. Like, they also look kind of natural. Natural in the sense, and this is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want hyper-emphasized breasts. I didn't want that. All I wanted was a more natural fitting to my body proportionate breast size because I had nothing. I had nothing. It was an insecurity, but it also was something that did affect my day to day, how clothes fit, how things looked on me. And with me like doing fitness um, and also essentially like modeling, that does make a big difference because not that my rib cage sticks out a lot, but I wanted a higher profile because from the side, all you would be able to see my rib cage and it does create a different silhouette with my body I'm just so ecstatically happy I I'm so glad I did this and I'm glad that mind you I wish I did it earlier but at the same time that you know honestly at 30 honestly at 30 I feel like I have such a better sense of self also like who I am while this doesn't necessarily change me Per, per se, like internally, it does make me intentionally happier. I feel better in clothes, I feel more confident in the sense of like, okay, this fits me. Never like, oh no, I just don't, no, I have always loved myself. Don't get this fucked up. <laughs> but I just, I'm just so happy with it. Like I like putting on clothes now and like normal clothes, not just fitness stuff. So it makes me really happy. Um, I would say like my biggest thing I need to like overcome with my recovery though it's um, definitely a thousand percent the fatigue. The fatigue is whooping my butt. 
whooping my butt. I am so freaking tired. I'm so freaking tired. It's insane. Like the fatigue is just crazy. I'm tired. I'm sleepy. I have no energy for anything. And that's just kind of like my biggest hurdle at this point. Uh, my recovery has been different than my other friends who have got it done. And I have a bunch of fitness friends who have gotten their surgery. And we've kind of just been comparing notes. My other friends have said that, my other friends said that they were able to like go out, drive like within a week. And you know, things were back to normal. For me, I was just like so out of it. I'm so tired. I just feel fatigued. Like even if I go to my friend's house, at like nine o'clock, I'm like falling asleep, which is crazy because I'm just I'm just tired. My body's just drained. And I would say too, another really big thing for me that's been hard is the surgery gut. It's been I'm telling you, it's six weeks appointment, so it's been six weeks of just being swollen, feeling like very full, and it's been honestly a very big like mind thing because I've worked very, very hard to look how I look, to look how I look up to that surgery point. Like I think that, like I said, like before, I said this is my best body I've ever had. And for me to go from that to feel not even comfortable like wearing clothes, it's very painful. Um, it's annoying, I just don't feel like myself, I'm tired, I don't look like myself. So the body dysmorphia has been up um, I just don't like it how I feel, how I look, um, body wise, you know, and of course too, like I haven't been exercising as much, like I looked at my legs in the video and I'm like, okay, there's a little cellulite going, like, you know, I haven't been able to really be on any type of real thing other than just recovering from a scalpel and that's just, I'm not, kill, I'm not beating myself up over it, but it has been mentally hard to look at myself and I know some people, they they go down very quick with that bloat and the surgery gut. I've had the surgery gut and I really think that's probably gonna take me like maybe the full three months to really go down, which is kind of upsetting because essentially that's all summer. But you know, it is what it is. I'm really hoping that everything is fine and I can get back to my normal life and spending time with all you guys because <laughs> it's been real lonely. I miss y'all. Alrighty, so super quick appointment. Doctor again, phenomenal, love him, super nice. I feel so at home. Receptionist and like all the surgeries, just love it, love it, love it. I'm doing great. I'm a perfect patient again. He was, I explained everything I was doing. He's just like, I'm not worried about you in the slightest. I said, well, thank you. <laughs> Cause I've been doing exactly what I need to do. Um, he said the fatigue is normal, especially because I'm a very active person. So my like expenditure day to day is a lot different than other people. So he said it's gonna take some time because basically the most important thing my body's doing right now is focusing on healing, which is energy, recovery. So, you know, it is what it is, but let's go ahead and I'll get back home. I'll kind of show you my mobility, what they're looking like, and we'll go from there. So Doctor's appointment went really well. Um, like he said, everything was good. Um, I did bring up the fact that I'm just like, hey, I'm super tired. And he told me, you know, and as a trainer, I already know when your body, especially like when you're working out, it's almost the same concept. You're doing small little tears in your muscles. That's why you're so tired when you work out. You're like, oh my gosh, I gotta just sleep. Because your body's focusing, its only concern is on fixing those repairs. So that's why you need proper nutrients, that's why you need proper sleep to have those repairs. I had my incisions done right under here. So think about that. I'm, they're, they're cutting into my body. The scars look really great. I can't show you on YouTube, um, but think about that. So it's a huge, it's actually major surgery. It's actually major surgery. And I've been taking it kind of like a little too lightly in the sense of like, oh, I should feel better already. It's been six weeks and someone cut into my actual body twice and put <laughs> objects in there. So I need to just chill out. He told me though, like he was like, you do everything right. Like I'm not worried about you at all. Like, cause he was like, hey, like you can work out, but no 
He's like, no chest flies, no pec decks. So basically exercises that are going to focus, and I have to be very careful even when like demonstrating this to you, but being very careful with stuff that's gonna activate the pectoral. Also too, with the core, because your core goes all the way up. So like, even if, um, I'll notice it too, I'll do some exercises, or even I'll do something around the house, and I'm like, oh, I use my core, and I'm like, oh, this hurts. Like when I very first got off of my, um, I think it was the second day, I was in bed, and I'm lying in bed, and I'm like, I went to get up, and of course your core goes all the way up in here to like help lift you up. And I was like, oh, oh it hurts, oh, it hurts, never mind. I was like, how do I get out of bed? How do I get out of bed? <laughs> but obviously, so when you first have a surgery, as we talked about, you're not supposed to bring your arms really that high up. So it's about 90 degrees to start. And then after my doctor, listen to your doctor, my doctor, because also too, I went over the muscle, not under the muscle, it's a little bit different. Um, my doctor had me go essentially 5% every single week um i just posted a video up onto my instagram where i actually and now i'm gonna do it here it's not gonna be good but you can kind of see like i have to go really slow but i'll explain this process better so normally you know you flare out the lats i'm scared to do it right now honestly i'm, I'm scared like okay that wasn't too bad okay oh this is the first time i'm doing it with you guys so here we are okay Ooh. Okay, so notice how I go very slow. I don't have weight. And also, too, as the weeks have been going on, I've been bringing my arms up here and moving my forearms to kind of like do my hair, but I'm not bringing. So if you look at this here, do you see how my chest goes up when I bring my elbows up? So having my elbows here 90 degrees, I can move my hands and do other things. But the second I bring these up, my body changes and my chest is going to be activated. So that's a big thing, reason why they don't wanna do that. <laughs> I had some people ask me too, like, hey, do you have any regrets? Um, you know, I hope your surgery's been good. I hope recovery's been good. What are your thoughts on it? And I've talked to a couple different friends that have had breast implants and like there are fitness people as well. Some are bodybuilders and et cetera and all that, all that jazz. And it's really interesting. Every single person I know has had a completely different recovery process. And it just varies person to person, like realistically. For me, I've been having a very healthy, successful recovery. It's just been rough for me. So personally for me, like two big things I would say that I just wish I knew before going into this, or maybe like could have just planned a little bit more accordingly, is realistically how serious recovery is and how limiting recovery is. Like, I couldn't turn to open up my tumbler to drink water. Like, I put my water in very big things, that way I can just drink it and sip it, and I couldn't carry my normal jug. I couldn't twist open my water tumbler. The first day I had my friend, I'm like, hey, cause she brought me home, I was like, can you open these for me? And she was like, what are you gonna do? And I was like, I don't know. I actually don't know. I actually didn't realize how much activation, like every single little thing does. Like still like I, I can't open pickle jars right now. Like I'm very precautious because I paid almost $9,000, $10,000 for these. So I'm not gonna ruin it over a $5 can of pickles. I'm just not doing that. But it really has been humbling. Like. Hair has been so stressful. Hair has been so stressful because you know I have kinky curly afro hair. So that needs a lot of water, needs a lot of product and maintenance. It's not easy. It's not just, oh, I'll put it up in a brush, a bun, and I'm good. Like, I can get mats. Like, it's just, it's a lot. And like, right now, I have it so it's easy. Like, see how easy maintenance level is? Like, I put some oil in it, I put my bonnet on, I'm good. But just, and now I can actually style my hair. Like I can do this, all that. Um, every single day, like I kind of wake up and essentially I do my little warm ups. And I've been doing this very slowly and trying to kind of get back into like some exercising with my upper body. There is gonna be a lot of differences, but the biggest thing too for me is making sure that like everything's still kind of loose, flexible, mobility is a very big thing for me. But recovery really was like, just not not being able to do things and I'm very hyper independent 
So that's a, uh, that's a me thing too. Like I'm, I do everything by myself. So having to be like, I can't do this is very frustrating. Like mentally, mentally, like, wow, oh my God, like I can't wash my dogs. Oh gosh, like how do I get groceries in? Okay, I can't do this. I ordered something from Amazon. Like I had to order a shake, like a, um, one of those bullet uh, machines to make my protein shakes because I couldn't shake my protein like in the shaker cup. So I had to get a blender for that because also my other blender was too heavy and too high up. I know I could just have a friend or someone come over and like rearrange all my stuff, but again, hyper independent. So I don't want to be a burden to nobody. You feel me? And then that, the tiredness, the fatigue, I wish someone had told me how fucking tired I'm gonna be. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. Like nobody's business. It's very hard to deal with because I'm, I'm a 4 a.m. gym girly. Like I get up at 4 a.m., I like my mornings, I go outside, I do my gym, I do my cardio, I come home, I'm with my dogs. I da -da 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 and I'm struggling to get up at 11 a.m. I'm like, huh. I'm like the other day I went to get food with my friend and I was like, I need coffee. And they're like, it's 12. And I'm like, I need coffee. Don't talk to me right now. I need coffee, I need carbs, and I will become a human again. After that, we have whatever conversation. And I just perked right back up. But even then it's so fleeting. Like <laughs> after this video, I know for a fact, I wanna go lay down but I need to get back into it. And that's something that my doctor said that he said, you know, like try to just like push yourself mentally to do the things. Um, you know, I know you're very physical, which is true. So my physical activity is way higher than just like kind of an average person. So if we look at it, like and watch my Apple watch, like my activity levels are still like above a normal person, but it's just so low for me. It's really hard to kind of balance that stuff. And then the very last complaint I have about surgery, no one talked about it, is this fucking surgery gut. I'm finally down to something where I'm like, oh my gosh, like I almost started crying earlier because I'm like, oh my God, I see abdominals. I see rib cage. <laughs> it's been rough. It's been real rough. And I'm not saying that, oh my gosh, I look ugly. I'm not saying that. Do not put me in that category. I'm saying that carrying an extra 30 pounds overnight when you already don't feel good is very fucking with your head. It's very uncomfortable. I was so supla. I was just like huge out here. I was waddling. I looked like, I was walking around like I was pregnant. Like I looked a solid six months, I was walking like this and like bending to get down. Like I went to shave my legs. I was like, yo, no wonder pregnant women can't don't, just give up because how am I like a turtle? I'm like, no, I can't see over my boobs. I can't see over my stomach. I'm like, this isn't happening. This isn't happening. Um, it's just been hard mentally because too, like it's summer and my birthday was in June. I had such a good time, but it's like, okay, everyone's in the bikinis. I'm like, I worked so hard this winter. I worked so freaking hard this winter. And I'm really proud of myself for what I was like what I've done. It's crazy. But it's and I know and it's all in my head. It's all in my head. Like I still look great. I'm not saying I don't. I'm just saying that for what I worked for for months, grueling, kicking my own butt and it's like <laughs> I'm still like so after the surgery, before surgery, I was like on the little bit heavier side because I did bulk a little bit and I was like, okay, I'm gonna just chill out, get a little bit more fat and you know, skin. That way these don't have stretch marks because I was very small. Um, and so I was on a little bit heavier side anyways, but like nothing that like two weeks of like cardio and just, you know, not being terrible with my food would have fixed. So I went from that to 30 pounds. I hit over 200 again, which I have not done in like three years, which was really scary. I was like, ah! <laughs> I did not want to do that. And so I jumped on the scale earlier this week. I got back in program with my coach, back on diet, back on training. 
So this week has been kind of like the first like real week of that. This week off at 182 and I haven't jumped on the scale yet today. Yesterday, I did get under 180. I'm so excited, I'm so excited. So body incoming, you feel me? But I definitely would say those are the two biggest things surgery wise that was just really hard was just like how fucking tired I am, how hard this recovery actually is for me. Cause like, I just, I don't feel like, I feel so scatterbrained. Like things are hard for me, like making content, responding back to messages, even just talking to my friends. Like my friends, I've, I've reached out and I'm just like, hey, like I'm real sorry. Like I feel like I've been like a bad friend because you're always like reaching out and like talking to me and asking me how I'm doing. And I just don't, I'm not engaged in your life. And it's not that I don't want to, it's just I don't have the mental capacity to even think of like, oh, hey, what are you doing? Like, that's how scatterbrained I am. And which is very weird because you know me, I'm a yapper. I'm a yapper. I'm gonna ask you about every single thing. You wanna talk about what? Yes, hold on. I'm sad. So it's just been kind of hard because being a good person and good friend and like being empathetic is very important to me. And not being able to kind of really do that has been hard for me mentally because it's like, I love you so much. I'm so sorry. But self-care, and my friends are great, so they know that. But um, that, like, just feeling so disorganized, like, everything's just organized. I really just want to, like, <sighs> big breath. But the life and the world does not stop because you having a bad day, honey. It just don't. So with that being said, um, I'm gonna do more post-op videos as we go, probably for the next year or so, just because um, I have another appointment in three months and recovery, it's not gonna be the same. Like you're probably not gonna see me doing benching for a bit, probably not until winter, but it'll be fun. So again, thank you so much. The support I've gotten is phenomenal across all platforms. Um, it's been really nice and like positive because I was nervous to kind of talk about this. Not that I was hiding it because obviously I can't, I went from an A to a D, but just because how people interact with people once, well, oh, you got plastic surgery and they do all these things and like, especially like unwanted opinions. Oh, you need to love yourself. Oh, you need to go to therapy, stop spending money. Da, 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 da. But majority has been really good. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you haven't, please, please, please like and subscribe, tune in. We got lots and lots of content coming and it's going to be great. So until next time.